So here we're going to look at antibodies or immunoglobulins. Both are interchangeable terms. We see the image here on the title slide with a constant region and a variable region. The variable region here is referring to the ends here. Notice these little cutaways. Shape is very important. These proteins need to bind to antigens, and this is why there's a variable region up here, is because of different shapes these can take on. So looking specifically at the definition of an immunoglobulin, these are a class of proteins of the immune system that are also known as antibodies. So as, as I said, they're kind of interchangeable terms. But what is an antibody? Well, antibodies are attached to foreign substances to allow the immune system to destroy them. It's important to make note here that the antibodies are not the ones doing the destruction. They're merely attaching to the surfaces to kind of signal the immune system to come destroy this foreign substance. They're specific to each type of foreign substance. So this variable region, these specific shapes, match a very specific foreign substance. So as a result, we have many different types of antibodies. Now we can classify them into these five main groups, IgA, IgG, IgM, IgE, and IgD, and the Ig standing for an abbreviation for the immunoglobulin. Each, or levels of each type of these antibodies can give your doctor an indication about the cause of a medical problem. So as we'll see in some, there's certain tests will do for certain antibodies to determine if your body's been exposed to um, certain antigens. Now within our classifications, we have monomers, dimers referring to two, and pentamers here referring to five different ones. Only IgMs are pentamers, IgAs are dimers, and IgD, IgE, and IgG are both monomer antibodies. So starting with IgA here. They're found in areas of the body such as the nose, breathing passages, and digestive tract. It's important that these antibodies are located in these regions because they protect body surfaces that are exposed to the outside forward substances. This is their specialty. About 10 to 15 percent of the antibodies present in the body are IgAs, and a small number of people actually do not produce IgA antibodies. It's a rarity. Um, so do you need them to live? No, but by having them, you're able to better protect your surfaces that are in direct exposure to the outside environment. We have IgGs. So keep in mind the second or first G, I should say, is lowercase, and the second G is uppercase. They're found in all body fluids. They're a monomer, and they're the most common antibody found in the body, about 75 to 80 percent. It's important for fighting bacteria and viral infections and only type of antibody that can cross the placenta in pregnant women. This helps um, protect her baby or fetus. They're also utilized here as we see this Zika virus antibody test, IgG and IgM antibody test. So if we're looking for someone that might be exposed to the Zika virus, might be carrying it some way, we can test for the antibodies to see if they're present. And this is why the antibody test, you see here and here, an IgG and IgM indication referring to the antibodies classification that this test is um, changing if it's indicated its presence. IgM are found in the blood and lymph fluid, are the first type of antibody made in response to an infection, and they cause other immune system cells to destroy foreign substances. IgM antibodies are about 5% of all the antibodies in the body, and they're the only ones that fall into the pentamer class. We see our antibody level. We have initial dose of antigen. We see IgM primary response increases above IgG and then goes away. Our second dose of antigen, the IgM does come back, but our IgG you can see very different. So IgM is the, um, are the first type of antibody made in response to an infection, that initial or primary response. They are made during the secondary um, dose of the antigen, but you can see that in relation to IgG, their secondary immune response is minimal. IgE, if you suffer from allergies, this is one that you can blame here. They're found in the lungs, skin, and mucous membranes. They cause the body to react against foreign substances such as pollen, fungal spores, and animal dander. They're involved in allergic reactions. The levels of IgE are often high in people with allergies, and there's certain limits as far as what would be considered a low level, moderate, high, and very high levels here. And it can classify them as such. So if you are more sensitive to certain pollens or allergens, you can probably be an I IgE for your reactions. IgD is an, IgD is an interesting one. These are antibodies found in small amounts in the tissues that line the belly and chest. However, exactly how they work is actually not 100% clear. Um, so they do exist. 
Um, we acknowledge their presence. They do have some very basic idea of their understanding, but exactly how they work specifically is actually not clear. Just as she goes to show, scientists um, can, are continuing to do research on things that we may know exist, but we need to understand better how they perform and work. A way to a mnemonic device to kind of remember these, it's called GAMED, so you don't forget any, G-A-M-E-D, and this is referring to the different antibodies there. This is also a great summary slide to kind of give you that review of what IgG does, IgM, IgD, and so on and so forth. Lastly, the five immunoglobin classes here, we see the names, we see the properties, and associated with the structure here on the right-hand side. Just another way to help you review and help you understand the difference between the different types of immunoglobins present in your body.